Hello everyone. I am international master Ratkovic Milovan. Welcome to the chess world. In the next 10 hours we are going to talk about the king's Indian def defense uh, uh, with black pieces of course. So are you looking for something to beat d4? So this is definitely the right place for you because I think that the king's Indian defense is the right weapon. This is the right opening for you to beat d4. I mean, after your opponent do this, it's very hard to find like a good system where you can have like a good active position and to beat your opponent. Uh, many times white chooses some uh, some very solid lines where it's very hard for black to get a good counterplay or something like that. Uh, so uh, in King's Indian defense, you will see many times position on the board is very sharp, complicated, and uh, if you want to beat white, this is the right system, the right opening for you. As I said, many times position will be complicated, sharp, aggressive, so you 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 have to like uh, have good calculation skills. Uh, also, you um, you have to know or to at least to like positions where you need to attack your opponent. He attacks you. So let's see who will be faster and let's see who will be mated first. So many times these kind of things happen in the king's Indian defense. But on the other hand, many times there is uh, there is a normal position on the board where you should play uh, positionally, try to create advantage and beat your opponent. So this is very interesting openings. There are a lot of things here we will see and uh, it's definitely not boring or something like that. Uh, you will see uh, in many variations black sacrifices a pawn or in some variations uh, also two pawns or three pawns in order to get good counterplay. That's common thing for the king's indian defense so uh, you will see definitely uh, uh, the right uh, the right variation uh, against d4 so uh, I, I will just show you how to play in the verse in the first uh, a few moves uh, i think that the first four or five moves are always the same and uh, then later like more important things are coming. So the first move is knight to f6. White goes for c4. So this move uh, we are going to analyze. Um, there is one chapter in this course about the London system. So it's like a half an hour and I will be talking how to beat the London system in, in the King's Indian defense. So c4. Pawn goes to g6, and then knight goes to c3. Everybody plays that, so this is definitely the only move for white in this moment. Bishop goes to g7. Now, e4 is the most popular move for white. Uh, I mean, white definitely has to do something like this. In some variations, we will see white could play knight to f3, then to develop this bishop, and then later to play pawn to e3, but... Those systems are not so popular. We will talk in one chapter about something like this, about knight f3 followed by bishop g5 without playing e4. But e4 is, as I said, the main move. So in, in more than 95% of games, white does this. What should black do in this moment? Definitely d6. So once white play e4, black should reply by doing this. Pawn goes to d6. Why is this move important? So first of all, we open diagonal for the light square bishop. And at the same time, we prevent e5. Uh, there are some players uh, who, okay, who play at yeah, the king's Indian defense. And they play castling in this moment and allow e5. Okay, sorry. Uh, I think that this is better move order because e5 cannot be played. Look, d6 has to be played sooner or later, so why not to play it immediately? That is the right move. Now there are many different continuations for white. We'll talk about all of them, of course. Uh, there is 
knight goes to f3, knight goes to f3 is the main move, so this is the main line in the king's Indian defense. We will spend a lot of time doing this, this is the most important thing. Uh, but there are some other variations, like Semish variation, pawn goes to f3, also one of the most important, in my opinion, the second most important variation in the king's Indian after knight goes to f3 variation. There is also h3 variation, Makogonov system, and you also have to know this. Now white has different ideas like knight f3, bishop g5, or bishop e3. It's it's like uh, totally uh, um, like different opening than than uh, totally different variation than the main line. So it's also something new, something you you it would be good to to know. So we will talk about uh, we'll talk about this move too. There are also some other lines like um, f4. We will spend some time doing this. The name of this is four pawns attack. It is very sharp, but we will see that white center is unstable in this opening and that black can create very good counterplay. There is bishop goes to e2 idea. And then after black goes for a castling, white can attack black by playing h4, g4, f4, those kind of things. So in one video, in one chapter, we will talk about this, how to fight this white's attack. We'll also talk about bishop d3 move. In one chapter, um, white wants to play positionally and he chooses this square for the bishop. People used to play this uh, um, uh, like uh, I think 50 years ago or more than that, but it's still popular, let's say. So some chess players prefer this square for the bishop. Um, also, we, we will talk about, uh, I forgot to mention, uh, we'll talk about knight f3 and g3 so about fianchetto variation fianchetto variation is also very popular and you should definitely know what to do against this variation uh, so e4 d6 this is the the, the i think the uh, typical position in the king's indian defense and in more than 95 percent of your games this will happen. So uh, I think I said everything here. Um, let's just see the first line. The first thing we are going to analyze is, of course, the main line. So what happens if knight goes for knight to f3? What should black do? Why is this the main line? Because this move is totally natural. You know, knights on f3 and c3. White has good center, as you can see. Everything looks very normal. What should black do? Definitely short castle. Short castle we do always. So in all these variations I said we play short castle. Then bishop goes to e2. That is the main continuation and um, this is the main line. Uh, there are like thousands and thousands of games in database played. In this variation. By the way, white could go for h3, for example, but then it transposes into some other variations. It transposes into the Makogonov variation, so we will talk about that when we do the Makogonov variation. So bishop e2 is definitely the main move and the main variation in the king's Indian defense. What should black do in this moment? There are a lot of different possibilities for black. I will just say some of them. Uh, e5 is the main move, but there are also some other possibilities like knight bd7 and then later pawn goes to e5. There is also c5 variation. There is knight a6 variation. There is c6 variation. A lot of different variations, but I prefer this one. Bishop goes to g4. This is not the main move. I think this this is like fifth uh, fifth move, uh, uh, like according to popularity. But black has excellent results in this variation, and um, black will definitely have interesting position. Uh, we will see uh, these variations are very nice for black. In, in in many of them, 
we are trying to attack White's castle on the king's side, and some of them, on the other hand, we are trying to play positionally and outplay our opponents. So, basically, this is a very interesting line. Uh, by the way, if you are playing against some, uh, uh, let's say, weaker players who doesn't know theory very well, this is the right move for you. This is the right variation for you, because definitely your opponent will not know what to do, because this is not the, the main line, you know. Uh, okay, so bishop goes to g4. Now, basically, there are three main options for white, three main moves. These moves are castling, uh, bishop goes to e3, and knight goes back to g1. So, we will talk about bishop e3 first, because bishop e3 is the main move. Everybody basically play that. Uh, I, I will just say now that if white plays short castle or knight goes to g1, basically these systems transpose into this system with bishop goes to e3. So that's why we're going to see bishop e3 first. This is the main line and uh, you will definitely have something like this if you play bishop goes to g4. Well, now what? What is actually our plan with bishop g4? First of all, we do this because it is unusual and uh, it is very active. You know, the bishop is well placed on g4. There are several reasons. I mean, we create this, um, this pressure on h5 d1 diagonal and at some point we would like to take the knight on f3. When we talk about the king's Indian defense, we, we must say that dark square bishops are most important in this opening. So we have to save, we have to keep our dark square bishop on the board. We cannot take maybe the knight or if, uh, if white does something else, we cannot uh, give our strong dark square bishop. Dark square bishops are very important here. On the other hand, light square bishops could be given for opponent's knights like this or something like that. I mean, everything depends on the concrete position. Later we will see that in some variations, there are of course some exceptions. Sometimes we take the knight on c3 with the bishop, but those situations are very rare and uh, that happens um, not so often. So basically, what is general rule? Try to keep this bishop on the board, don't trade it, don't take other pieces with this bishop. This is the key piece in the king's Indian defense. Uh, it's also the same for white. His dark square bishop on e3 is also very important and you will see in, in this course, in some variations, our main goal will be to take this bishop. As I said, on the other hand, light square bishops are not so important and we can exchange them, we can uh, take the knight or do something else. Uh, okay, so uh, bishop e3 was played. Then the best move for black is knight f to d7. The main idea for black is to push e5 and that's why we did this. That's why we played knight f to d7. That's not the only reason we moved this knight back because then the bishop has open long diagonal and that's not all. After we play e5 in, 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 in like many variations white push d5 and then we have this possibility. Pawn goes to f5 and why we can do that because our knight is not on f6 anymore. The b8 knight uh, when we talk about this knight, the knight will be developed to c6 in some variations. In some variations, we will play e5, white push d5, and then our knight jumps to a6, and then jumps to c5. You know, the knight on b8 will be very well placed, it is flexible, so don't worry about it. Don't worry that your d7 knight is blocking that square for the b8 knight, because that's not the case. It is very easy to develop the b8 knight later. So there are several ideas behind this knight f7 move, so try to remember it. Uh, now what? Now it's, I think, the key moment, because uh, in this moment, white has a lot of options. So we will analyze six possible moves for white. So I'll, I will just tell you what options he has. White could play queen goes to d2. That is normal developing move. 
he could also go for knight goes back to d2 just to eliminate our g4 bishop and get rid of the pressure he could play castle that's normal he could also play rook goes to c1 rook goes to c1 is actually the main move he could play knight goes to g1 and after black takes the bishop he will take back with the g1 knight also very clever idea and there is also queen b3 move to attack the b7 pawn i think that we should start with knight goes to g1 interesting idea i think that a lot of people do something like this because basically black is forced to take on e2 what else to do bishop cannot go back to e6 or something like that of course not so bishop takes e2 knight g e2 what did we said what did we say what is the main idea why did we play knight f to d7 because of e5 e5 should definitely be played three options for white to push the pawn to take on e5 or to ignore that and play castle link let's try d takes e5 first i think that d takes e5 is harmless you know it's it's nothing special black has good play after this so knight takes e5 is the best response the c4 pawn is hanging b3 maybe to defend that pawn and then let's play a5 why are we playing a5 because we would like to put the knight on a6 and later to c5 and a5 is important prophylactic move because if you go knight d7 knight c5 directly white will be able to push b4 and attack the knight so we play a5 in order to stop b3 b4 move and secure the knight so knight will jump to c5 position is very interesting in my opinion very good for black i think that both sides have equal chances in this position so this is one possibility so what if white doesn't take on e5 instead d5 in that case let's play f5 straight away you see our knight is on, not on f6 it is on d7 so now we are able to do something like this and to start attacking white on the king side now what i mean if white castles or something like that that would be very bad because of this and this black is already better because white's castle on the king side will be ruined of course not the best move for him is f3 to support the e4 pawn and to create this uh, escape square for the bishop then what we have one very clever idea we do this a lot in king's indian defense especially in this main line uh, the bishop on e3 is very strong it uh, defends all these dark squares in white's camp our bishop on g7 on the other hand is restricted it's restricted by the e5 pawn and it's not doing much so it would be great for us to exchange bishops you, you remember when i said keep this bishop on the board it's very important we have to have that bishop on the board yes that's right but i also said the same for this dark square bishop white's dark square bishop but to trade them to trade like dark square bishop for dark square bishop that's okay that's okay sometimes it would be good to to like not to do that when your bishop is stronger than his bishop but in this concrete case our bishop on g7 is obviously weaker than his dark square bishop on e3 so for that reason bishop goes to h6 if white takes then that's very good for us queen gives this check pawn goes to g3 queen takes h6 and then what to do after white castles black should play this knight will go there and then later knight will go to c5 and this knight will probably go to f6 and then later black should just de uh, develop his rooks like this let's double on the f file and black will have very very strong pressure on the king side because you see that white already weakened his king side by playing g3 so it's already weakened his dark squares are compromised queen e3 is also possible at some point this is very good position for black 
Okay, maybe white doesn't want to take our bishop on h6. Instead, he goes back to f2. In that case, let's play a5, castling. Knight goes to a6. What did we achieve? We achieved this. Our bishop is no longer on this bad g7 square. Now it has this open short diagonal h6 c1. So this is very good diagonal and we will use it later in order to attack white. So you see again we did this typical thing. a5 followed by knight a6. Maybe b3. Knight a c5. Now many times white tries to kick this knight. So usually he does this in order to do this. But a3 is a mistake in this moment and I will show you why. f takes e4 should be played, f takes e4 and then queen goes to g5. So now something like, like this is possible but it's not so good because a takes b, a takes b, rook takes a1, queen takes a1, knight jumps to d3. So the b4 pawn is hanging. We would like to take his good dark squared bishop. Then we, I mean, our knight is already very, very strong on d3. It's already infiltrated there and black is better. So it's not good for white to prematurely attack our knight on c5. So it's definitely not good for him to play a3. What if queen goes to c2? That's much better move. Then let's play queen goes to g5 with equal chances for both sides. What should black do here? Probably just to double the rooks on the f-file and, and then at some point open up the f-file. That's it. Good. I think that, as I said, both sides have equal chances in this position. Let's go back again just to repeat some things to see what happened in this variation. So the king's Indian defense starts like this. Pawn goes to d4, knight f6. c4, g6, knight goes to c3, bishop goes to g7, e4. White has very nice center at the moment. He maybe wants to push e5. Let's prevent that. Pawn goes to d6. So when do we play d6? Usually we play d6 when white push e4. Knight goes to f3 is the main variation in the king's Indian defense. Short castle should be played. And then bishop goes to e2 is the main move. Then this is very, very nice variation. Very nice idea for black. Bishop goes to e3 is the main move. And then knight from f6 goes back to d7. Uh, several ideas behind this move. And then we said there are six possibilities for white. We started analyzing knight goes to g1 because it's a very interesting move. It's not bad for white. And like a lot of people do this. We should take knight g e2 and then e5. We, we saw d takes e5 variation already. And then we talked about d5. If he does that, then f5 should be played. f3 and then just bishop goes to h6. I think that this variation is clear. What if... Okay, so the last move is e5. What if white ignores this and goes like this, short castle? Then let's play a5 because we have the same idea. We will play knight a6, knight c5. I mean, the d4 pawn will be removed anyway. Uh, white will either play pawn to d5 or black will take on d4 and then jump to c5. But definitely a5, knight, a6 is the right idea. Queen d2 for white, so normal development for him. Knight goes to a6. Pawn goes to b3, just to strengthen this pawn formation on the queen side. And now it's the right time to take. Knight takes. Rook goes to e8. Let's develop the rook. This is normal. E file is semi open file. It's important for us. Also, the e4 pawn is now under the pressure. F3, then let's play pawn to c6. Why are we doing this? D5 and b5 are important squares. So, by doing this, we stop these kind of things. Knight jumps to d5 or knight jumps to b5. Also, we create this good square for our queen eventually. Sure. 
Rook f d1 maybe? Knight jumps to c5. That's why we played this knight a6, knight c5, knight a6 maneuver like in the first place. So uh, knight a c5. Uh, uh, we will develop the queen to c7. The rook to d8. Oh, sorry. To d8 with good position for black. Instead of playing knight a to c5, it is also possible to play knight dc5. That's also a very interesting variation. Why knight dc5? Because we could put this knight onto this square or this square, c7. So we have some interesting options for that knight. Maybe knight d2, attacking this pawn d6. Queen goes to c7, pawn sacrifice on d6. We do this a lot. You will see these kind of things, like to sacrifice pawn on d6, in King's Indian defense, that's something normal. Like to be a pawn down in King's Indian defense, also something normal. Many times we do those kind of things in order to get good counterplay. So don't be worried if you are a pawn down in King's Indian, King's Indian defense, that's totally normal. So Queen C7, White takes there. Look, if White doesn't take, then just Rook AD8 with good play. So White takes, Black takes. Rook takes, and then after playing f5, we'll take that pawn back. So we'll take on e4, material will be even, and this position is equal. Okay, just to remind you what happens here. So this is critical moment. Uh, knight fd7 was played, and then white has a lot of possible moves. He chooses this one. Knight g1, bishop e2, knight g e2, e5, and then he decides to go like this. Short castle. Then let's play a5. Queen d2, knight a6. b3 maybe. Rook e8, c6, knight dc5. Maybe in my opinion, I think that this is better move than knight a c5, but knight a c5 is also normal. Knight dc5, knight d e2 maybe to attack the d6 pawn then let's sacrifice the pawn and play f5 what if he doesn't play knight d e2 instead maybe rook a b1 to have this like to try to play a3 before and kick our c5 knight in that case let's develop the queen queen e7 a3 we have this good square for the a6 knight before a takes b a takes b Knight goes to d7, later knight will jump to e5 and attack the c4 pawn. Position is totally equal. Don't worry about your backward d6 pawn. Maybe it looks weak, but it isn't because white also has some weaknesses in his camp. So if he takes d6 pawn at some point, some of his pieces, some of his pawns will be also hanging. So don't worry about that. Okay, we are done with the first variation in, in this main line main variation of the king's indian defense so again just to remind you what is the main line the main variation in king's indian defense that is knight f3 bishop e2 line so if knight f3 castling bishop goes to e2 then you should go for bishop g4 bishop goes to e3 is the main move and then knight fd7 followed by e5 white has six possibilities we started with this one black should take and then black should play e5, then we analyzed three options. We analyzed castling, d5, and d takes e5. I hope that you, 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 you remember some of these things. Okay, so let's continue. Let's analyze some other possibilities for white in this moment. In this very important moment, maybe even crucial. 